Hey guys, well, a buddy of mine called up earlier, said he'd found three old radios in a friend's uh, attic, and was I interested? So I said for sure, bring them on round. So here we go, another three, uh, probably unusual in that you won't have seen too many of these before. So the one on the top is an Albus. The one on the lower right is a Pyard, and I've already restored a much earlier Pyard from the 30s. This one is obviously uh, 40s or 50s. And the one on the lower left, I don't know, it's just called a Mediator <laughs> on the front. Um, and so I suspect that's the one I'm going to have a look at first, because it looks the most, uh, I don't know, interesting. And um, so this is keeping me busy for a while. Got a couple of radio projects to do. So here we go. It's quite big and not too heavy though. So I don't suppose the chassis inside is a monster or anything like that. Um, grill cloth is in good condition. No heavy staining or anything like that. Um, here are the only sign of what looks like a make or a mark. This mediator. You can see tons of dust behind the glass here. Which is a good thing. It means probably nobody's been in here for a while. Uh, no markings on any of the controls. So that's a potentiometer, that's a potentiometer, uh, that's a selector switch. Uh, so the uh, tuning dial, tuning knob is here on the side. And there's a weird connection on the other side. No idea what this is, but there's a toggle switch here, which is quite hefty, and so we'll have to see what that's all about. I think this is uh, veneer rather than any sort of photo finish thing. Um, so hopefully, I hope it is, because on the top there's some rather bad damage, uh, and so we'll have to see how well that's going to clear up. So we'll look around the back. So again, not a whole lot to go on here. Um, we have a valve chart though. And so there's nothing, uh, I don't think, too unusual in the way of valves here. Uh, and we have the Swiss Post uh, certification tag dated 1942. So that's as much information as we got. Um, on the back on the outside so uh, let's get the back off and have a quick look inside okay here we go well the good news is tons and tons of dust everywhere so high likelihood that this is largely original chassis seems to be in two complete separate pieces the cables going across um, so that's interesting Mains transformer, so we're not serious strong or anything. Rectifier, which looks to be nicely burnt. Uh, speaker looks certainly sizable. We'll look and see what it's like later. Um, yeah. So I'm assuming this is kind of like the RF section, and this is the power supply and, and uh, audio output section with the uh, audio output transformer on the back there. Um, yeah, so dust mask on, vacuum cleaner and brush. Well guys, how's this for interesting? How many sets have you seen that are in a wooden cabinet, but the chassis is made of Bakelite? <laughs> First one. 
first for me anyway, gotta tell you. Um, so uh, it has the potential to look gorgeous, you know, <laughs> when all is said and done. However, there's always a price to pay. The entire thing is wired with this rubber wire. So the minute you touch anything, uh, you get this. Um, so all the wires that I can see at the moment, and it looks like the wires that interconnect here as well, all show little cracks on them. And so the minute you move them, I'm sure it's all going to uh, do its thing and crumble and come apart. So uh, this might be a complete strip down and a complete rebuild. Who knows? Um, be nice if I could get it going first. Um, so at this point, I think we will pause and see if we can find some documentation that might help along the way. So I found a circuit diagram. Um, and as I said, I don't expect a lot in performance from this set. It's just got like three valves and a rectifier. Um, even though it does say on the uh, on the model plate that it consumes 50 watt, 60 watts, which is about 50% more than my usual sets. So uh, there's no fuses anywhere in the AC line or capacitors or anything like that. Although there is a fuse mentioned, just haven't seen it yet. Um, so hopefully the circuit diagram is a reasonable representation of what's in what I got here. Um, one of the things I have to say uh, that struck me when I was uh, cleaning this up is the design can best be described as has a certain beauty to it. And um, back in the day somebody designed this knowing that it would get stuck inside a, a radio cabinet and never be seen except from the for the occasional service technician and yet they still designed it to look like this which I think is uh, indicative of a time gone that we may never get back. I suspect these days that this type of uh, design would be applied only at the very very high-end luxury type of products and who knows maybe this was a very expensive uh, set in its day. I shall go and look it up. So underneath we have a little access panel which hopefully uh, will give me a little insight into how all these t modules interconnect uh, and to see if it's really 100% rubber wire or not. Well it all looks pretty original in here. Um, so if anybody's been in here it's been a little while since they were in here because I don't see any immediate signs of uh, newer components. Um, however, somebody's been in here at some point because the panel that I took off here uh, had its 8 inch layer of dust on the uh, on the back and when I cleaned it all off you see somebody scribbled a little diagram here where obviously they were trying to figure stuff out. So, but I don't see any signs of uh, any messing around in here. So, um, in terms of taking this chassis out, clearly I gotta cut all those lines across there and then take out each piece separately, which leads me to another little quandary. And yes, everything looks to be rubber wire, so it looks like I'm going to have a major rewiring job on my hands here. So, uh, taking this half of the chassis out should be no big deal. Uh, I obviously have to cut all these interconnecting wires. Uh, I tube will come with it, or the socket anyway. It's one wire going up to the uh, speaker which I presume is a ground and then you have the uh, connectors on the audio output transformer so that's pretty straightforward this one on the uh, for the RF side of things um, the problem is mechanical um, because there's no wires other than these guys here but I haven't yet figured out if and how this front piece is in any way fixed 
to the chassis um, by anything other than the uh, dial cord. Um, I'm hoping that somehow they're connected. I haven't seen it yet though. <laughs> Because the challenge is, if I, uh, if, if for instance, if these pulleys here belong to the front piece and it's not in any way hooked to the chassis, um, the only way to get this whole chassis out is to undo the dial cord, is to take off the dial cord, and then I don't know how you get it back on, because the only way in theory you'd get it back on is when everything is in the cabinet. Um, Man, no idea. That's so. I think what I'm gonna do is start loosening a few screws and things like down here and up there, and then see whether this thing just falls back down, or whether there's some linkage around the front here that I can't see that holds it to the chassis. Yeah, that could get messy. So since I can't yet figure out how to get this whole side of the set out, I think I'll take this side out first and that'll give me a little bit more room and then maybe I'll be able to see better um, because right now I really can't figure out how you get this side out without taking off the dial cord um, which I can certainly do but I'd never be able to get it back on if you have to put it on when the thing is in the set in the cabinet so we continue to investigate so here's a closer look at the audio amp section. I would describe the construction as really professional. Um, it is such a shame that it's all rubber wire. But if I look at the general layout inside here with tag strips and everything, um, it's definitely nicely built. Um, the inside is sprayed um, a lighter color, maybe that's some sort of a metallic spray to uh, help with shielding because as I said normally these types of chassis would be uh, would be metal right so that's that part out and I think the uh, audio output transformer looks to be in damn fine condition no real signs of stress there or rust or anything like that I have a little bit of positive news. Uh, all of these three sort of sub-assemblies are actually mounted on a subframe, which is uh, bolted in. And then you can, uh, in theory, take all this out together. Still doesn't fix my problem though, because when I try and uh, move this away, you can see it tries to bring the cable with it. And if I go too far, I'll just unravel all that stuff. So my thinking is, my only hope now is that if I can unscrew this whole assembly, just one, two, three, four, and let it drop down on top of the chassis here, on top of the tuning condenser, without um, making it fly off the pulleys at the front, then I can take the whole thing out. But man, how I'd stop it, how I'd hold it, you know, steady so it didn't pop out later. <laughs> no idea. Still, I think I'm going to have to bite the bullet on this one. Um, although I haven't spent, you know, half an hour musing over it, at least I found a subframe thing. Which should make it easier when it comes to putting it all back together for testing. Um, yes. I'm sure this will be dead obvious when I get to it. Um, just it ain't that obvious now. Well, a couple of hard stops later, uh, I have it out of the main cab, but um, we're not there yet. <laughs> this guy, this whole glass and, and pointerous and cursor assembly is held just by the, uh, the steel cable. There's two drums here. One is a, the drum just for the pointer, and the other one is one that, which has a, a cord on it rather than a wire. And that one is for driving the um, tuning condenser. And so the, that one is all fully integrated with the uh, with the receiver module, so that's not a problem. 
but it does seem like there's no way of removing this glass and pointer assembly from the chassis here without undoing this uh, wire um, this wire cord so I'm gonna no make a note as well as I can about how it roots and uh, take it off of there <laughs> ah, I hate doing this especially when I don't have any diagram that shows how you put it back but it's either that or just sit here looking at it for the rest of the evening I assume in the factory scenario when they're putting this together there's some sort of a jig that holds this in place while they fit all this cable and then they seat it all into the chassis and then remove the jig um, which somehow fixes this onto the uh, onto the frame here of the chassis um, I don't know what that looks like, don't have it. So we're going to take that wire cable off anyway and uh, move along. So the deed is done, it is taken off. And uh, one thing I discovered is on the back of the uh, cursor mounting thing here, it's got a really ingenious uh, spring tensioner. So both ends of the wire are soldered to a little cup here at the end of a spring. And as you pull the cable over the uh, pulleys, uh, it automatically tightens with this fixed spring here, which is a really cool idea. Shame they couldn't come up with an easier way of getting this out though. <laughs> right, I think that's it for now. We'll get and clean this up. Um, I am not going to mess with this a great deal. I'm going to clean it up as much as I possibly can. But with this thread mecha uh, cord mechanism here, I am going to absolutely not touch that at all if I can. <laughs> Right, so here's the dial mechanism cleaned up. Um, I couldn't clean the glass properly at the back because the print is that stuff that you just breathe on it and you can rub it off. Um, I give it a quick trial. There was a number up here at the top, but the minute I just rubbed over it with a light tissue, uh, so it just smeared it off like chalk off a blackboard. So I just brushed off the rest of the dust with a... Um, with a brush and uh, luckily most of the dust was on the black back plate and so I was able to clean most of that off. So, looking a lot better now than it was before.